Alright man So we back again with another video for you guys Um I stumbled on this This topic right And Is it the BMF I think Okay so Due to the BMF Your boy ain't got no Uh Your boy ain't got no Hulu Um Subscription You know what I mean? We ain't got that Hulu money We got that Netflix money So I kinda never really knew the backstory on Uh Big Meech or the whole operation that happened or like the whole ordeal type shit so i stumbled on this right this video and i'm like mm, since he is out of jail and everybody been talking about it uh but been talking about him or whatnot i'm like let me let me see who is this guy like let me see what he what he was more known for like you know like getting the backstory getting the history out i'm assuming this what this is what it is or not even fully or just a little bit, but let me just get into it. The smartest thing the BMF brothers, Demetrius and Terry Flannery ever did was getting out of Detroit when they did. Because back in circa 1989, when they were stepping up from neighborhood dealers to trying to get, you know, five, ten kilos at a time, uh, that was the killing season. I think they was the most luckiest guys in the world. To meet Lawrence and KK, because if they would have met anybody else, or oh, you think went. they might have been what victimized? I think so. Cause they, you has let's say if they would have met the best friends. <laughs> let's say if they would have met the best friends. Like the newspaper said, best friend was out to kill all top drug dealers and take over. Well, they was right. We had the meeting about killing all the guys after they killed uh, the two Brown brothers. We took heel and said, go out there and kill any, any and all drug dealers, period. We take it over. Niggas don't like it, fuck them. There was a lot of that shit going on out here, man. If this individual was alive, most likely you out there that's selling drugs now wouldn't be. Because they would take you out because they don't want you to have no power. It was all about money, homie, power at that time. Everybody wanted the power. It was about, it was about status. You know, who was, who was getting more money than who? You know, the best friends and other groups like them, not just in Detroit, but in uh, a lot of America's more dangerous cities, guys have figured out it was easier to just kill the dealers and take what they had. And lucky for them, they bumped into the Newell brothers, KK and Lawrence, whose composite character K9 made an appearance in the first season of BMF on Stars. Well, the character was. The K9, my brother, Lawrence Newell. Let me take you back to when it really, really, what really happened. They had played a game. They had played a game before then. My name's Chad. And the guy who they was playing against, the... the they had lost the game, so they wanted to play another game. They were gambling. The first game, the first, the first, the first, the first game, they, they had a bet on the game. But the streets and the talk was that they bet all this money, $50,000 on the basketball game. That wasn't true. That wasn't true at all. No, that wasn't true. Y'all didn't know that, but that wasn't, that wasn't true. They didn't even have a bet. And they, and because they were doing some street business together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Big 50 frequented the dog at KK's illegal casino, and the shooting seems to have been a culmination of a, uh, I guess, who's getting the most money competition gone a little too far. Big 50 had been a YBI teen soldier from the late 70s and rose at one time to be one of the biggest guys in the cities. Now, 50 came in there. One time, I'm going to tell you a story about 50 when he came in there. He had the baddest motherfucking ring I had ever seen in my life on his finger. Maybe it's because it's the early 80s, I want to say. But correct me if I'm wrong. I would have thought this nigga was about to say the baddest, thickest. Probably could suck peanut butter through a straw type. But this nigga talking about the jury. Like, this nigga had the cleanest ring. The jury probably would just starting to pop out there. Like, starting to be popular and shit. Or, gold always been popular, but. 
the baddest ring. He came in that motherfucker. I'm talking about when he came in that motherfucker, he wasn't, he was throwing it up. You know what I'm saying? He was throwing it up. So anyway, that nigga came in there with a diamond ring on. It set up off his hand about like this. He had a diamond right here, a big 10 carat sitting up here. He had another 10 carat sitting over here. He had another 10 carat sitting over here and diamond out. I was like, That's yeah. 30 carats. Man, the man had on a ring that was so motherfucking bad. Now check this out. I think my brother got a little jealous. No, I don't think he got jealous. He did get jealous. And he had the map on. He had the map with, you know, the, the world, the United States. He had that on with, yeah, with the ring. He came in there. My brother got a little jealous. He never said it, but I know he did because he wants to be the big dog. He wants to be everything. The very next day, the very next day, he went out to Greenfield Plaza, me and him. He got a diamond ring. It must have been like a 50 carat. This motherfucker was like a flashlight. One big, I swear to God, I swear, ask anybody. He got a diamond ring so big, he went and got the, the map of Africa, a chain about this big, with his name spelt out in diamonds and lawns. On the map of Africa. On the map of Africa. Unlike Soldier Boy, this nigga be able, he could be able to be like, I had the first chain, nigga. I had the first designer chain, nigga. Steve came in there with that fucking ring on. And that map, and the very next day, my brother went and he bought that. I found that one of the main downfalls of a lot of the biggest, not just drug dealers, but Italian mafia, all type of criminals, is gambling. And in Detroit in the late 80s, early 90s, all the big names, Demetrius Holloway, Maserati Rick, and others, and the Newell brothers, they loved to gamble. And the Newell brothers had their own after hours, and that's kind of where Meech and T got exposed to them. And the beef that made it onto season one of the BMF Star Show, where there's the K-9 shoots the guy at the basketball court, that all started. All right, so... Yeah, I know how I started off the video saying, like, I didn't really know too much about BMF um, or Big Meech. And I thought this was going to be, like, the backstory or whatnot. And I feel it isn't, it's not the backstory. This is more, unless I'm wrong, correct me. But it seemed like he's doing more of a breakdown of the show of, like, this is the reason why you seen this, like, kind of a move in this episode. Or why you seen this guy in this episode. Started over who was wearing the best jewelry at the gambling spot. My brother so had that stopped messing that with the plug. He had stopped I messing with the plug because he had I'm knew lost. some shit was about to happen because one day he come out the joint. He come from out the joint. The gambling joint. The gambling joint. And he was going to throw something in the garbage can. And when he went over there to throw something in the garbage can, the feds is in the garbage dumpster searching. So my brother jumped back. He said, man, what the fuck y'all doing? <laughs> they say, minding our business, and you need to mind your motherfucking business. So he went back in, closed the door. I'm in Baltimore. I never forget it. He called me. He said, man, you need, where you at? I said, I'm in Baltimore. He said, man, you need to come home, man. We need to talk. I said, what's up? He said, man, just, just come on back, man. We need to talk. So when he got back, told me the story. So he told his people, they call you, don't answer the phone. Plug was here and he was a Colombian? Yeah, Colombian Plug. In Florida or here? In Florida. But if they, he was telling his people, if they call you, do not answer the telephone because something's about to happen. We about to, something about to happen because he didn't see them in the, in the thing. They, they own us, you know. So, so now what he do, he go to California. Okay, before we get, how, how, at the peak, how many months do you think it bucked? Man, I, 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 I couldn't really say, because, like I say, I was never really at the pickup point, 
he wasn't never What's really. What's the most you ran through in a short? Oh, man. I know the most I ever did in one day was 20, about 20 or 30. So you had to have done 100 in a month. Oh, yeah, man. I was, if I, I see, I was, I was selling from bigs on up. He wasn't doing the bigs. Mm. He wasn't breaking shit down. You know, he, I, he was making, what, about 2000 in profit on these? Yeah. So you might have made 200000 in a month. Yeah. Profit. Yeah. And, and, and I'm gambling like. Millions. And, 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 I, and I'm gambling like a motherfucker. When Big Meech and his brother were moving up the food chain and Terry got a settlement that allowed him to probably give the seed money for their first larger purchase, uh, Detroit was full of guys that were selling, not full of guys, but there was more groups than we'll ever know that were selling, you know, 100, 200 kilos a month. Does it throw off the video, but the sound of not the sound effect, the beat in the back remind me like give me a little bit of um swamp story, so I might just do a reaction to one of his story, uh, his videos. Just saying. Now, what made them want to leave town? Was it the idea of more opportunity somewhere else, or they just wanted to be big fish in a in a sea that wasn't so full already? Of sharks and piranhas. I'm at the um, car wash up on Seven Mile. I never forget it. I'm at the car wash up on Seven Mile. And one morning, I went there to get my car wash. So when I get there, you have to get out. They take your car. You walk. They get the thing down. You can watch your car as they wash, and then you go on down and you pay. So when I come out the door, as soon as I come out the door, as soon as I come out the door, Meet and T is standing there. While we're thrilled with Fab, one thing our storage doesn't need is more assets. Managing thousands of files. Hey, K, what's up, man? I'm like, what's happening? He's like, man, you talk to your brother? Now, I'm glad it was them two. You know what I'm saying? They weren't particularly violent. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, they didn't come across to me as the violent type mom. They come across to me as some money getting guys, you know, that just wanted some money. They didn't want all the rah-rah and all that old type of shit. If some guy, you know, I can't tell you or this person, I don't know what my brother after he took your money too. He got my money too, but I ain't told them that. I ain't told him he got my goddamn money too, and I'm looking for him too. Who gonna believe that? Because everybody in the streets thought that Lawrence and KK is like this. They like this. They thought that when he sold a key, I got money off of it. That when I sold a key, he got money off of it. But when he sold a key, I didn't get no money off of it. I had my own thing. I had my own trap house. But not to the streets, y'all was one thing. Yeah, to the streets. But we gonna come together when something happened. For sure. You know, we if something happened, he get into some I'm gonna be at his age. I get into something. He gonna be at my age. You know that's 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 that's, that's, that's how it was. But when it came to the, everybody thought that me, him, and we was just. It, it was supposed to be that way when I first came home, but it didn't turn out that way. I ended up leaving. That's when I found out that they had gave him some money. I didn't know they gave him some money. So I ended up getting my money back. He ended up coming back to Detroit. I ended up getting my money back. I don't know if they end up getting their money back. I don't know the circumstances or whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. He was getting the shit, sending it back, but he was sending it back to my brother-in-law and my cousin. They selling this shit. I don't even know it. Back. He, he using my fucking money. Yeah, that's, that's my brother. That's the dog. <laughs> I think they was the most luckiest guys in the world to meet Lawrence and KK because if they would have met anybody else, anybody else, it wouldn't have went the way Or oh, you it think went. they might have been, what, victimized? I think so. Because you has, let's say they would have met the best friends. <laughs> let's say if they would have met the best friends. You understand what I'm saying? And it was uh, it was a lot of that shit going on out here, man. You know what I'm saying? 
It was a lot of that going on, you know, motherfuckers selling you fake keys and all kind of shit, man. You know, Lawrence was Lawrence, and he did his moving and this, that, but he wasn't into the, the robbing and the, what he gonna do, he gonna try to get you in that crap game and gonna try to beat you out of it. You know, but he ain't finna run up on you and the head and take your money and have, he, that wasn't his style. Detroit has started getting to the point where, you know, especially when, when the drought came, you know, when the drought hit the city, you, you damn near, you damn near got it. You, you, sh you sh The only thing I could partake in is that good Mary J, right? So with that being said, I, like, I used to, I used to go through a time where when I started picking up on it heavy, right, and getting hit with the first time hearing, bruh, it's a drought out here. A uh, drought? What you talking about? Nigga, ain't nobody got that package right now, bro. Like, they probably don't got that bitch, so ain't nobody got shit on that right now, boy. You, you asked out. Now you gotta wait until the plug it, right? Should be gone. <laughs> yeah, you should pack up and you should leave. What year was that? I mean, anytime a drought came. Anytime you, you notice a drought came, you should pack up and you should just wait till it come, you know, oh, don't deal. If you, so you, you going outside of your people, you know what I'm saying? Cause when that drought come, now you looking everywhere. You looking well, over here. Yeah, that's how you end up in the ground. You know, you looking here, you looking here, you looking here, you looking here, you looking here. And that's how you end up in a situation that's not too good. Like I ended up. Getting shot, getting shot four times, had to dive out a window. Damn. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys, man. Nigga said, nigga said that, that shit so casually. Uh, nigga, I got working for me. Yeah, four times, had to dive out a window. Oh. Getting shot, getting shot four times, had to dive out a window. Oh, God, yeah. Nigga said that shit so casually. Getting both shot, and you know, dodging by the. Nigga, what? What? Yeah, yeah. These guys, man, that was uh, working for me. Well, they started out working for my brother. And they started working. My brother had, you know, he ain't with the trap houses no more. I'm with the trap houses. So now they working for me. Um, oh, so you had rocks being sold out of spots, too? Yeah, at yeah, one time, 86. 85, 86, 87, 88, it was, I ain't got to do that no more because you have met this, yeah. you know. 1990, the Newell brothers got indicted. Now, Lawrence, a.k.a. the dog, a.k.a. canine, was really the guy who had the plug, so he had worse charges. He was not able to get out on bail. He did, like it says in the show, eventually tell. Now, the show has a lot of stuff wrong about other people that told, like B. Mickey from the 50 Boys who didn't, but K-9, a.k.a. Lawrence, did tell. K.K. did not. He had a little bit less charges, though he ended up doing 10 years. So he gets out on bail. Then by this time, I had stopped messing with him. We had got indicted. I stopped messing with him. And my brother, Lawrence, my brother, Dog, I went to go see him in the county jail. He was like, I was out on bond. He was, they gave him a bond, gave me a bond. Gave me a bond, didn't give him a bond. So I went to go see him. He said, man, look, man. Uh, leave them guys alone, man. I said, what you mean? He said, they smoking, man. Leave them alone. They're in jail, I ain't heard shit. Leave them guys alone. Don't fuck with them no more. Period. I said, all right, man, I ain't fuck. I ain't doing nothing no way because I was indicted. I was indicted. I ain't doing nothing. So this particular day, I'm um, in the 19th hole with Demetrius. And me and Demetrius is gambling head up. This is one of our head ups. We didn't have counters. Me and him we had counters where, and I never beat him. <laughs> Just to put it out there, I hate to say that. But he always beat me. 
All right, y'all made it up. I'm going to end it right here. Y'all let me know if y'all want me to finish it or continue. Hit that like and hit that subscribe. You feel me? And follow your boy on Twitch, bro. Stop playing. One.